In this lesson, you'll learn how to tune query string searches, how to control output verbosity, and how to run your queries and control other behaviors via the REST API. Now, in the first lesson, we learned that Couchbase runs 15 different types of full text query. So far, you've only used one of them. Everything you do through the UI for testing purposes is what is called a query string query. It's a useful query type with features corresponding to what a lot of users expect from this type of query. Terms can be prefixed with a plus to make them required, prefixed with a minus to exclude them from results, and suffixed with a value to boost the score of corresponding results, boosting their position in the results. As we introduced in the last lesson, all terms are searched for in all indexed fields by default but fields can be excluded from this default behavior as you've seen. If you do, you must explicitly search these fields by prefixing their name, including the full path for nested fields to the search term itself. Now, any query in the UI can be exposed as JSON with a corresponding curl command. The URL that's shown points to the required REST API endpoint and the JSON describes the query payload to be posted to that endpoint. You can click Copy to Clipboard if you'd like to use this command in a terminal window. Let's take a look at running a query from the command line. We're also going to pipe the results to a command line tool called JQ to make them easier to read. I'm going to do this by going to the Demo2 index that we built in the last lesson I'm performing the same search, but this time I'll go up to Show Advanced Query Settings and Show Command Line Curl Example. Then I'll come over and copy this to the clipboard. I'll switch over to a terminal window and paste my command here. Now we're going to have an issue, as you'll see, if I run this command, because we do need to add authentication to this command using an appropriate security role. For this example, I'll just use the Global Administrator account. I'll go back in my history and then go back up into the command and modify it to add my user administrator with the corresponding password, which will be fine for this demo. I'll go back to the end of the command and I'm going to pipe the results into this command line tool I've installed called JQ, which pretty prints the output. I'll run the query and we see we get back verbose results with a lot of detail about our scoring. If you go through this, you'd find all of the resulting information. You'll have a chance to look at this output in much more detail in later lessons and labs, albeit in a possibly easier place to look at it, which will be Postman. But if you'd like to work with this command line tool, you can find it here, out on GitHub. A REST API tool like Postman may be easier to work with and is what we'll assume you're using in the workbook. In Postman, you'll configure a POST request to the query endpoint, assigning your bucket credentials once for all subsequent requests for this session with that endpoint. Here, you'll see that we're using the username and password for the bucket-specific credential that was set up in an earlier lesson. You'll then configure your payload with a content type header of application slash JSON. Now from the UI, you can copy just the JSON payload without the curl command and paste it as raw JSON into the body of your request. Then just send your query. So as you see here, the query itself is just JSON posted to port 8094 of your Couchbase server to the URL shown. The index name is part of the URL, followed by a slash query to complete the endpoint. You'll see various optional attributes for the JSON payload in the labs ahead and in the documentation, including, for example, an explain attribute that can be added. This causes verbose output of your scoring calculations. It's also the default. You'll see later that you can turn it off if you want to make your results a little more straightforward. You'll also see the query attribute which encloses the payload for the query itself. Now, as we've noted above, all queries out of the UI are of the query string type, or just a query within the query attribute here. 
Other types that we'll see ahead include match, match phrase, and a whole lot more. Now, because Couchbase emphasizes exposing all our capabilities via REST API for easy integration, there's much more that you could do here than just issue queries. You can get the count of index documents. You can get all your index definitions. You can get a specific index definition. You could update a specific index definition. We saw earlier how you can get a hold of your index definition from the UI. You could delete an index, and you can also pull indexing and data-related metrics, timings, and counters. Check the documentation for more details on these and other endpoints. So what have you learned here? Now, query string terms are optional by default and support modifiers to boost, exclude, or require any given search term. This query type is often what users expect, at least for your standard text field in a web page type of query. There's a lot of other types as well, as we'll be seeing ahead. Now, all queries that run through the Couchbase UI are these query string queries, and they support these modifiers. You can copy these queries out of the UI to run them from a terminal, as we saw, or through a REST API testing tool. Queries get posted to this URL, which includes the index name and is at port 8094, not 8091, which is where the UI runs. Additional REST APIs, as we saw, are available for maintaining your indexes, running your queries, monitoring performance, and more. Your REST API calls must authenticate using a security role with appropriate query and or administrative permissions. And as we saw, you can include and explain attribute in queries to get verbose detail about term scoring within your queries. You can also set it to false if you want to reduce the output a little bit. Now in this lab, you'll use query modifiers to work with narrowing down search results in a user-relevant way you're also going to switch over from using the UI for queries over to the Postman REST API tool, which we'll be using to learn all of the other query types and other behaviors throughout the rest of this course. Now once you're done with that, come on back. There's more to come.